Hello everybody. I am here to show you what I did with the cute little egg that I shared yesterday. If anyone's here, I am just trying to get this to load for myself so that I can see that we're actually live and in the right direction. I see Linda's watching. There's a couple people. If somebody doesn't mind commenting, just to let me know that uh, it is facing the right way for you and that I'm actually on the right page this time. Last time I did this, I accidentally did it on my uh, own page, my personal page, which was not where I wanted to be, but hi, Linda. Hi, Brenda. Is this facing the right way for you guys? It's not loading on uh, my end for me, so just trying to... Hi, Brenda. Looks good, thanks, Laura. Now, if only I could get it to refresh. There we go. I'm just going to quickly turn the volume down. Okay, perfect. Hello, everybody. I will get uh, almost right to it because it took us a bit to get going here. So you guys have waited long enough. Before I get into this, I will just give a quick reminder of the upcoming retirement party. So if anybody is interested in qualifying for that, I have a new host code for April. It is this one that shows right here. In order to qualify, if you place a $100 order for any product, it does not have to just be retiring product, but if you place an order for $100 in product, you will earn a spot at the retirement party and you'll receive the free gift that those who place a $65 order also qualify for. So that will be coming up April 24th. I'm excited to team up with one of my team members, uh, Laura, who's watching here, to offer this together. So if you do place an order, just shoot me a message to make sure that I get the notification. Sometimes they don't go through properly, the notifications, I mean, um, and we'll get you set up for that. I'll leave this host code here. And as we go through the project, I will try to note some of the things that I'm using that are retiring so that you can prioritize what you may or may not need. But I'm excited to show you guys how I made that little background piece that I cut the egg out of and then what I turned the project into. So who wants to see the card first? Hi, Wendy. Hi, Tammy and Janice. And Susie. Thank you guys all for coming and uh, watching. So I will bring the card in and show you guys anyway. So this is what I turned that cute little egg into. So this egg is from Flowering Vine, I think it's called, but it has all of these dies with it. So these ones here, I use the egg shape or the oval shaped one to make the egg. So that's the one that I'll use today. I'm going to just take this off of here. This one is in the spring catalog and it coordinates with flowering vine stamp set, which I'm not using for this, but I thought that this would go really well with Easter. I had a background technique going and decided I would use this to cut it out to make an egg. Um, and then I also have this trio of tags. You guys saw me use this the other day. This die set is the one that is retiring from the annual catalog and it is only $5.50. So you get all of these tags plus the little embellishments that go with it. And I overlooked this die. I thought of it as using with the coordinating stamp sets and didn't really think to use it as separates, but I've been using this all week now that we've discovered how great it is. Okay, so I will get to showing you that technique. And then if you wish to stay and watch me build the card, you can uh, visit with me while we do that. All right, so I'm going to need a block. I am using a piece of shimmer white cardstock. That will be what I will cut the egg from. And then I have a spritzer with rubbing alcohol in it. And I have a collection of ink. So I have Highland Heather, So Saffron, Flirty Flamingo, Pool Party, and Pear Pizzazz. 
Some of you who did my chick class with me the other day have seen this technique in action, but I'm using it again to create this egg. You guys stamped on top of the paper that we created the other day. This time I'm going to die cut out of it. So you might not be surprised. Jan, you got to do this with me the other day. So how I did this was I actually, to make sure that my color was placed where I wanted it, um, I just took my piece of paper. The, it doesn't really matter so much that the paper is there, but I just put it there for now. But the important thing is having the die underneath my block for placement, because I'm going to put the ink onto my block here, and I want to make sure that I'm going to end up with some of each of these colors within the size of that die. So I start with laying down ink straight onto the block. So you want to open up, I'm just using one at a time, and I'm going to use the end of the pad that is closest to the end of the casing for the pad. So I don't want to use this one, it's a little harder to control where this end is going, but this one's just right there. So I can see that if I tap that, straight onto my block here. So I'll hold it steady and just tap that onto there so that I get some color, a little bit more. And you can see, hopefully you guys can see through there, that um, some of that purple, which the Highland Heather, will be within the shape of my dye. So I'll close that one up and move on to Sew Saffron. The other advantage with using the end of the ink pad is that I can kind of pay attention from watching from the side view here that I'm not going to put that yellow into the purple ink because you, I did a little bit there, but I'll have to dab it off. But you want to try to avoid putting one ink pad into the color of the other one. Otherwise, you'll muddy up your ink pad with the color. Okay, so Flirty Flamingo next. I try to hold it and not have my head in your guys' view. <laughs> there we go. So you can see the rainbow of color going down onto my block. I might need to add a little bit more blue pool party. That one's a little hard to see on there. And then pear pizzazz. There we go. Okay. So I have an extra scrap sheet here. Normally I would just take my block away from my work surface so that when I do this next step, it doesn't spray all over the place, but I want you guys to see what I'm doing and how much alcohol I'm applying to this. So I'm going to just move my card out of the way for a minute and use a little bit of a shield here to protect everything from having the off spray hit the rest of my table. So what I'll do here, again, this is the spritzer. It has rubbing alcohol in there. And I am going to actually first move this out of the way. I will bring this piece of paper back in in a moment, but I don't want to get that wet just yet, just in case this runs underneath the block. So you can see that nice array of color there. And then I'm gonna take my spritzer and spritz all over the block. So you wanna get a nice pool of ink, or of liquid, sorry. And then I just give it a little bit of a swirl so that the color is not so spotty. You can see it's moved around a little and the lines are a little bit blurred so they're not quite so harsh from one color to the next. So just take that and flip it over. So you wanna make sure when you're doing this that the liquid is really pooled up. If you don't really pool it up on top, I lost the little piece that I had. I had a piece that I showed in my class the other day that I did not pull up really well. And it just sort of stayed like ink spots. It didn't blend nicely. So you really want that liquid to pool up so that it can do its thing. 
So here is that piece of paper. That's how I made that. And then just wipe your block off. If you're using dark colors, you might want to wear gloves. Sometimes the liquid will um, run down the side of the block and uh, get your hands all inked up. So if you don't like to have your hands covered in ink, wear gloves or something like that. So this is almost ready. One benefit to using rubbing alcohol is that it will help this paper dry faster so that I can now go ahead and die cut it. What I would otherwise do if I was going to stamp on this, like we did in class the other day, is I would heat set it. So I would just dry it with my heat gun, but I'm actually not really worried about that because I'm just going to die cut it. So I'll just step aside for a moment, but you can see here, I like the little flower at the top. So I'm gonna aim that up towards the Highland Heather portion. So I'll just line this up on here and then I'm going to go die cut this. So I will be right back. It's just right here. Have any of you tried this technique before? I know Jan has. Anybody else? And does anyone else have a squeaky die cut machine? Okay, so you can see that there, that die cut that all out. Should have thought to have my little die brush handy, but I will just set this aside to dry while we do the next steps. Not with multiple colors, Laura. It's fun. I've had so much fun doing this with multiple colors. I uh, have another project that I might just show next week. Yay, Donna, let me know how it goes. Give it a try. Um, I'm not sure that I can show my other one that we stamped on. It is part of our global project tutorial bundle. So our clients can earn that for free with a qualifying order, or they can subscribe and my team members all get it for free as well. So I'm not allowed to show that one, but I do uh, have some other projects that I might be able to share at some point. But if you want to see that other one, then you can always purchase the bundle or receive it by one of the other qualifying methods. So it's lots of fun. Okay. So this is just going to be set aside to dry. I've got the card here that you guys can keep your eye on and the rest is another fun technique. So this has sort of become, um, <laughs> I'll have a challenge for you guys afterwards and it will be the, if you give a mouse a cookie challenge. So I'll show you guys a couple of other projects and you'll understand what I mean, but I have not matching portion of stamped colors underneath here. So I used the borders to backgrounds, I think it is called. And I'm going to show you guys what I did here. So the, uh, I'll post this as a separate post, but just to let you know what the challenge is, while I was making these um, stamped layers to go underneath my vellum layer, I was thinking that it would be really cute <clears throat> to die cut an egg with um, the stamped layers. So then I set to work to create an egg. So I'll show you guys that project really quick. So making this little background here turned into making an egg. So I made an egg but then I had the negative space from the egg. So then I had to make a shaker card. So then I made this shaker card. So this is my, if you give a mouse a cookie or if you give Alana a technique, then you never know what it might turn into. So the cards just kept coming out of that little background. So what is your, if you give a mouse a cookie story? Watch for my post later that uh, if you comment on it to tell me what your, if I give a mouse a cookie scenario is for yourself, I thought we could have some fun with that. All right, so I have two stamps 
from the background stamp set. I've got the polka dots and then I've got, whoops, wrong one. I did another project. That is the one that I did this egg with. So I forgot to swap out that stamp. That would be important. Just gotta trade it. So I'm just using one block and one stamp on each side of it. So what I will do is do both of the purple first, or the Highland Heather. Try to get these placed without sticking my head in your view. These are longer than I require them to be. And then that way I can just trim them down. So I've got the polka dots and then I'll flip my block over to use these little spatter marks. I love this stamp. I had not used it until I was making this project and I'm so glad I have this stamp set. I can see getting a lot of use out of this one, at least while it's current. I don't know about you guys, but if you're a demonstrator, I find it hard to fit in time to use some of the retired things, unless they're my favorites, like layering squares or the stitch shapes and the subtle. I'm sure I will still use those. You have seen this technique before, Linda. Tammy hasn't. Well, I'm glad that you guys are learning some new things. Okay, so that is all cleaned off. Those ones are aside. And then I'll just do the same thing with each of the colors that I have my strips of cardstock. So I should just backtrack. This is Purple Posy cardstock, and we of course don't have Purple Posy ink, so I used Highland Heather to coordinate with it. Susie, I'll just quickly check which background set that is. Have it right here. Forgot to grab this one and have it in my little basket. So borders to backgrounds. So you get all of these different backgrounds. The hearts are adorable and the stars. So then the next color I've got is So Saffron. And you might notice one strip is a little bit smaller than the other. I did that just to fit them within the rectangle that is behind my vellum. So I just trimmed them down to fit. So just do both patterns in each color. I will also do a second giveaway. So if you share this video, I will do an extra giveaway for that. So I'll have the challenge for the, if you give a mouse a cookie, and um, I'll also do one for sharing my video here. So Flirty Flamingo is the ink, and I'm doing this on Blushing Bride cardstock. I didn't want the brightness of Flirty Flamingo cardstock, but I wanted the pop of color with the ink. So don't be afraid to match up different colors of ink to cardstock. I wanted it a little more bold because it's already under the vellum so you don't see it full strength. <laughs> I know Wendy, I, hemmed and hot over this one. It was actually one of our prizes at Bingo. So I know uh, Kathy has this one. I'm not sure if she's watching here right now, but um, I'm sure she will give this a try. She has this stamp set because she is taking my uh, Easter card class tomorrow. That's the cards I posted a couple of weeks ago. So we're doing that tomorrow. So she already has Springtime Joy that I used to do the bunny and that I am using for the greeting. I've seen some really great cards with this stamp set. Just one more thing to add to your list. You've got some time though, Wendy. You've got a few, whoopsie, a few months. This one will go, well, as long as it doesn't sell out, but it's uh, in the spring book. So you've got till June at least. Okay. So this one is Pear Pizzazz on Pear Pizzazz, and the last one before this was Pool Party on Pool Party. 
didn't think to mention those ones because they were uh, the same color. But just in case you wanted to give this a try. Who here has the uh, flowering vine dies? Anybody? I initially wanted it for the rectangle one. I was thinking that we might use it for my stamp club, but we went in another direction. Everybody gets to vote on what sets we use. So that isn't the one that we used, but um, I was thinking of a similar technique with it and the rectangle one. But when I was playing around with this uh, technique, I just wanted to try it with that oval. So it started just with die cutting this and then decided trying to come up with something to go with it. So that is how this was born, which then led into those other two cards that I was telling you about. You never know what will happen when I start with something. Okay, so we have all these ready. Now I'll just bring those all in. And I will put these onto a piece of paper that I have cut to fit underneath here. So I like to first layer them onto a piece of just printer paper because then it's nice and easy to trim up the edges. So I'm going to put them straight onto there first and just need to use stamp and seal. I'm gonna have to cut myself a piece of white paper. I realized that I I missed one. So just take your stamp and seal and Sometimes it needs a little bit of help. Now this is just, again, whoopsie, to place them down onto something that if I don't do a perfect job <clears throat> lining them up, I can trim up the edges a little bit. And I've stamped them on a piece that is too long anyway, so then that way I can just trim them down. Okay, there's one little glob there. We don't want that or it'll make a bump underneath there. So I'll just start at the top. Hopefully you guys are not gonna have my head right in your view. I don't know if I said this, but I'm actually gonna overhang this one a little bit. I noticed I missed a little bit of the pattern, but that is one advantage of placing them onto another sheet here first. Whoop, stay in order. The reason that these are different widths, I can't recall if I said this, having them all the same width, it made the, the full piece too long to fit behind that rectangle. And this rectangle is actually the stitched rectangles. You could just cut a piece of vellum and then it wouldn't really matter. You wouldn't need to be so precise in how these are sized. But I had already cut the rectangle and um, I don't know if you guys follow me, but I've been trying to do this scrap challenge where I challenge myself to use up what is on my desk. I feel like this is gonna to be too short now. Um, and if it is, I can just throw in another piece. But I've been challenging myself to use up what's on my desk. And it's been a lot of fun to see what I can come up with that is just sitting here. So I am going to, this one's actually good, once I trim this little bit of excess off, it will fit perfectly within the stitched rectangle. So we're good to go on that. I doubted myself momentarily that that was going to fit. You just never know. And I do just have to step away in a moment to get myself a piece of white cardstock that I missed. So what I'll do here is flip this upside down and then that way I can just trim off this little bit here to make sure I have one clean end. And then I can trim off the other side. Again, I'll just clean it up right down the side here. We don't need those. And then now I can trim off this bottom and this will fit inside the frame of the vellum. Thank goodness we'll still have the stitch rectangles and the stitch so sweetly. Those I use all the time. 
I wish that the rectangles matched up perfectly on our cards, but I think they're catering to all markets and we have different size cards in different markets. So that I think is the reason for that. So I'm going to just take a little bit more off the side just so that that fits the same framing side to side as top to bottom. There we go. That's better. So now it fits just within the stitched edge side to side and just within the stitched edge top to bottom. Maybe one last little bit. Are you guys picky like I am? It doesn't help your uh, wish list either, Susie. Okay, so I'll just make sure that my supplies here do not have a piece of white cardstock. Um, this could just stay as is, but because it's just on printer paper, it's a little bit flimsy. So I like to then layer it on a piece of cardstock. So that is what I need next and is the layer that I missed. So I'll just use a scrap I have here and cut it to fit this one here and then we're good. Okay, so this is just under three. And about four and an eighth. So now I can just attach this to here and it will be nice and stable to put all of these other elements on. So you can go ahead if you're doing any of this along with me. I'm not sure that anybody is, but if you come back to watch this and do this again or do this yourself, will anyone give this a try? There we go. Okay, so I'm not gonna put the vellum, actually I will take my egg, and you can see it may not be perfect where the colors line up, it's actually pretty close. So with the way, with the amount of ink that I placed on each one, the colors actually match up almost exact from the egg to this piece here. So what I did next was I attached the egg to the vellum. I centered it, but I'm gonna just put that piece there behind it to make sure that I'm going to put this egg down in the right place. And you know how vellum, it's always hard to get your adhesive placed in just the right spot so that you don't see it. I have some little glue dots that I will put on the back of my egg in key places so that they are the most hidden. Thanks, Kathleen. I had fun with this one. Sometimes projects start as a technique and sometimes they start as a certain purpose. But this one was just with the technique. So I'm just sticking some glue dots around the framing and some around the middle of the egg. Whoopsie, hold that away with me. And these should be enough to hold it in place Plus we're going to add some extra elements on top, so it's not the only thing. The glue dots are not the only thing that will end up holding it down. I just want to make sure that it's nicely held in place before I add the extra pieces. Mm. What do you guys use with vellum when you're attaching vellum to a project? you just make sure you put it somewhere your adhesive where it's going to be hidden behind another layer that's my best strategy glue dots and hide them behind another element okay so again just make sure that my striped layer is all in place behind the vellum and then I'll take my egg and center it so that it's also lined up with my color blocking behind there. And then what I can do is place glue dots in the same places or roughly, just make sure that they're on the back of the vellum where it will be hidden by the egg. That's why I put the egg down first because now I can see through it. I can place my glue dots on the back side of the vellum and hold this down to the color blocked layer.
I love color blocking. I have uh, another project, whoopsie, that I'll post later today for the You Can Create It Challenge over, I think it might be on Facebook, but I post it on Instagram. So I'll post it over there later. And I tried the dot coloring technique for the first time. So it's not perfect and I added an extra layer to it, but it was done and sometimes done is better than perfect. I'm sure none of you believe that that just came out of my mouth, but it's true. I've been trying to adopt that strategy lately. How about you guys? Okay, so that's enough glue dots. Now I can just place that over top. It's hard to line things up sometimes without making sh or while making sure my head is not blocking what you guys see. Okay, there we go. So that's on here. And now I will just set that aside with these items here. And I'll show you guys what I did to finish it off with these little things. So here again is this little die from the trio of tags. That's from this one. It's all good, Lena. This will be on my page. I'll leave the replay there so you can still watch the rest and uh, play along with the challenges. So Lena, I was saying I have a challenge to share my video. There will be a giveaway for that. And then I'll be posting information later about the give a mouse a cookie challenge <laughs> to share your own if you give a mouse a cookie story. And I'll come back to that at the end and explain it. But you're good. Don't worry. Okay, so I used Springtime Joy for this. This set is another one I didn't think I needed. And then I got it and I have been making things with it for a couple of weeks. So Springtime Joy is this one. It's got the cute little bunny, the chick. Um, oh gosh, I should find my Easter cards. They are, I love them. I shouldn't say that about my own cards, but I was really happy with how they turned out and I'm so excited to make them with everybody tonight. So I used this cute little chick for that and the Welcome Spring for that as well. And uh, we're gonna use the bunny today. So I'm using Memento. I'm gonna color it with blends. So that would be one thing that I did not grab. The most basic. Okay, so ink that one up with Memento. There's not much coloring to this one just because I'm not super skilled at coloring, but I think I'm going to take Wendy's class and uh, learn some skills. But it also, after you've done all this work with the two different backgrounds, you don't wanna to do too much more. So I stamped that in Memento and I'm gonna use gray granite just to put a really thin line. That is light, it looks kind of dark. And I'm just doing a really thin line on the bottom side of all the details. So under his paw, under his chin, under the flowers or her, I guess, the cute little head wrap of flowers. And then I'm using Flirty Flamingo. So I will use the brush tip. Wendy, are you proud? It's the brush tip, not the bullet tip. And I'll color the uh, flowers in first with that. Try to keep it where you guys can see it. It's not a lot of shading, but it's the brush tip. I always tease Wendy that I'm not very confident with the brush tip, so I just usually use the bullet tip but I found for this little flower that the brush tip actually, I had more confidence with it on that strange, I know for such a small area, but, so I just put the dark flirty flamingo around the center of the flower, and then a little bit more with the light just to pull it out a bit. And I realized I forgot to line his ears. <laughs> Yay, Wendy. I try to be a good student, whoopsie, then I, I do a little too much color, but that will blend itself out a little bit as it dries. Okay, and then I just used light old olive for, well, that's light mossy meadow, wrong color. Jeepers, no wonder it looks so dark. So I'll use my color lifter and pull a little bit of that off. So if you mess up, there's hope for me yet. <laughs> oh, we'll see if you, uh, if you think that after you have to put up with me. <laughs> So light old olive, not uh, mossy meadow. So hopefully I can 
salvage that. I tried to pull some of that color off and then just come over it with old olive. And I used the light old olive because I found it was closest to pear pizzazz. So that was my reason for that. So there's the cute little bunny. Just put that aside for a minute. And then before I do the rest, I will show you how I got the greeting. So I'm going to come back to springtime joy and show you guys. Oh, I have another greeting doctoring job or surgery job that I did, but I also can't show you that one yet. But you will get to see it on Stampin' Fancy Friday when I post it um, or when they post it. But I used the Easter from here and Happy from, oh, I'll have to find the name of that stamp set. Well Written, I think it's called, but I used a little Happy from that. So I'm going to mask the rest of this greeting so that I can just get the Easter and then combine it with Happy. So it's not hard to do. And you can see I have used this a few times. So I have one, I just took a sticky note, cut it in half, and I'm going to mask the bottom of or everything below Easter. I don't need that. And then I don't need the rest of this. So I just wanted that really pretty scripty Easter. And then again, I need my memento ink. So the key with this, once you ink this up, make sure it's well inked. And from here, you do not want to leave these on. Make sure that you peel this off and set that aside. Otherwise, if you stamp with that onto your cardstock, you're going to get um, the blob from here onto your cardstock. And I know that because I've done it. Not intentionally. You know, you just get into autopilot and forget and you end up with a big blob in the middle of your project. Okay, so I can stamp this fairly close to the bottom. I don't need a lot of room. I'm going to trim around that. So there's Easter. And then I can stamp Happy from, I think it's well written. I should post some supplies for you guys and then you'll know. So there's happy. Is this something you guys ever do? Snip different portions of different greetings apart and use them? It's kind of fussy, but it's a good way to customize your greetings if you don't have just what you need. Okay, so with this now, I just use my scissors. You could use a trimmer if you're not comfortable using your scissors, but I'm just gonna do it this way. I'm going to go this way next with snips. It's um, easier than scissors that aren't super sharp because you can get a more precise cut. So I just cut pretty close to the greeting in a rectangle shape. And then I'll do the same thing with this one here. Thanks, Lena. Lena, I can't wait, uh, and Brenda, some of you are joining into my um, You Can Create It Challenge. This is not my challenge, I should say I'm part of it. I'm a designer with that, with the international team. I think that there's two of the girls who are from Germany do it together in their country as well. And then they have the international group of us. So we, um, they tell us what supplies to use each month and we have to come up with something with it and it runs for a quarter so you get a package for each month of the quarter and then you get a package of extra supplies for the quarter and you can supplement each month's package with the extras from the extra package so and then every month we post what we came up with so we just posted uh, the March supplies or the March project today and uh, we start a new quarter now so if anybody wants to join us on that it's $25 for the whole quarter, which is not bad. So these little greetings that I snipped out, I'm just gonna glue them onto some pool party cardstock. If my glue would come out. Oops. If you don't get any, of course, the next time you're gonna get way too much. So I've just wiped that off with my finger. If you saw that nice big drop, 
come out of there and I will apply that to the back of here and place that in the bottom corner. When I'm doing this, I like to place it in a corner if possible and then that way I only have two sides to cut. So hopefully that's not too much out of view for you guys. But yeah, the quarterly challenge is $25 for the whole quarter. You get the whole quarter of supplies and then you can supplement it with whatever stamp sets and ink you want. The idea is to stay within the supplies as close as possible. So if there's paper and embellishments, use those and try not to add anything more. Though I did cheat this month and I used a strip of fine art ribbon. I just needed a little something extra. So I did add those. So I've cut these. Now I just need to fussy cut my bunny. So if you want to join that challenge with us, you can message me or comment on the you can create it challenge. When you're fussy cutting, it is a good idea to turn your paper into the scissors as opposed to trying to wrap your scissors in the direction of your image. You just get a cleaner cut that way. I hope I'm not pulling this too far out of view. I totally am, sorry. To try to do things out in front and under where you can see them. I know that uh, some of you are fussy cutters and some of you hate fussy cutting. Who's who? I know there's one in the crowd that everybody um, always likes to hand hurt when we're in real life. Of course, not right now. But um, it's therapy for some people and for some people it's a source of stress. It's kind of like bow tying. There's usually people who will swap jobs when we are crafting and together in real life. I don't mind it so much when there's somebody to visit with like you guys. And this little bunny's not hard. It's got pretty clean lines. So there we go. Brenda, you love fussy cutting? but not bow tying. <laughs> I usually uh, do the bow tying for people, which I don't mind. So next up, I have some white twine. I love this stuff. I am so glad that we will still be able to access that after the spring catalog. It is a go-to for me. I was so sad last spring when it retired. So I just have it on the roll. I know that I want to tie my bow about right here. So I'm going to just line up enough here that I have enough to tie a bow and then I'll come around twice. And then I'll trim off enough that I have two tails there that I can tie my bow with. And I'll stick a little glue dot right where I want to tie my knot or right where I want to tie my bow. First, I have a little glue dot on there. I am going to just make sure that it's not going to encroach underneath my tag from that trio of tags. Okay. I probably would have stuck it a little too far over if I hadn't uh, placed that there, just to be sure. And then this way, with that little glue dot there, you know what, I should have pulled this twine so that it was coming out the top first. You know, they've got to be coming from the right place. Yes, yeah, Susie, I remember when we met, you had the tiniest little flowers and details. And sometimes you had little punches, but sometimes you cut them out. And Lena too, the tiniest little flowers. I remember that when we first met. And that was like pre die cutting days. When the Big Shot first came out, I was not going to get it. I didn't want to have to get any of the stuff to go with it. I knew it would be a slippery slope, but it's definitely my most used texture embossing folders. That's my favorite. If I need a little something, I like to add texture. So I'm super sad about the subtle folder, but the tasteful textile is quickly taking place of it so laura i don't know if you're still here but this one is growing on i've loved this one anyway but i've been using it a lot more i have to like break myself in for this one okay so now i will 
dimensional, this little tag onto that layer. You still love fussy cutting, Lena? Or you still hand cut tiny little flowers? The pretty little hydrangea flowers from that strip that's in that set of dies is a really good one. I know they're hydrangeas, but they're still cute little blooms you can use on other projects. They don't need to be just for hydrangeas. So that's on there with dimensionals. Next, I will dimension the bunny. I need to just check my, you do use that one. I know, Laura, it's so sad. I'm just trying to like talk myself into the fact or talk, convince myself that I'll be okay. <laughs> yes, Susie, I am so glad. I, I know it might seem like I craft all day, every day, but I don't get to do that every day. Um, the last few days have been, and I just love it. So I am so glad that you talked me into some of these things. <laughs> Susie was one of the ones that convinced me to do my first class. I wasn't ever going to do classes, but Susie and a couple other friends convinced me to do a Christmas class and then it was just like the best thing ever after that. Okay, so here's my this or that question for you guys. I have this little tulip from the stamp set cut and colored. I did not put it on this project, but I thought I would tuck it in here and you guys can tell me once I have this one done with the tulip or without the tulip. And then maybe I'll have to add some tulips to the card. Ethan says with the tulip. But it is an extra element of fussy cutting, so. Yeah, Laura, I'm with you. Sometimes it's a little tricky. I really think I need bifocals. And uh, sometimes that makes it a little trickier. Okay, so I put dimensionals and peeled the backings off a little too soon. I wanted to put the bottom one on first. So this is off to side here. I just really like a happy Easter. I do like the greetings in that set, but I wanted happy Easter. So that was my reason for altering these greetings. And I didn't want it to just be welcome spring. This is really cute, but I wanted happy Easter for this. So I had to switch it up a little bit. Thank you, Brenda. I will uh, do another one next week, or maybe even two. I feel like I should come back and show you guys how to do the butterfly card. I'll, I'll bring it in here and show you guys, but um, I feel like I should do a live and show you guys how I did that card. It does actually incorporate what I just did on this card. So now that I've mentioned that, I think you guys will know what I did with the butterfly card where I think I posted it yesterday and said, can you guess how I did the, or what the paper is on the side and how I did it? So cute tulip, but don't add it. Okay, thank you, Tammy. Looks too busy with the tulip. See, that's what I thought too, Susie, that it hid the detail in there. I agree. And Donna, you say with the tulip. It's so, I love this. <laughs> okay, so this is my actual, only my second, or I should say actually only my second live um, tutorial on my page. When we did our spring virtual launch, I did some there. And then my first one that I did earlier in the week, um, I accidentally posted that on my first, my own page, as I mentioned earlier. So you, you guys are catching me here for my very first time. So that's kind of fun. And I love getting to chat with you guys while I'm making this. So I hope I'm not too sidetracked for you guys, but okay. So this layer went on with dimensionals to the textured layer and the textured layer is also going on with dimensionals. Lots of them. <laughs> I hope I didn't miss anybody's opinion, but I will go back and, and read them. Okay, and believe it or not, I did not add any bling to that. I left it just as it was. Um, you could add rhinestones or pearls or something like that. I should trim up the ends of the twine just a little bit so that they're even. 
I will post this card later as well. But um, be sure to share this. You guys will get entered to win a prize. Make sure that you come back and watch for the If You Give a Mouse a Cookie post. That will be a separate giveaway. And I'll show those cards again one more time. And I'll show you the butterfly card and just quickly tell you, now that you've probably figured it out, how I did the strip down the side. So before I get into the butterfly card, for those of you who weren't here right at the beginning, the If You Give a Mouse a Cookie challenge or contest is going to be, I'll post that graphic and you can comment on that one. Thank you, Tammy, um, to just tell me what your own If You Give a Mouse a Cookie scenario is. Mine is if you or if I give myself a challenge, which was I started off wanting to make an egg with this technique. And then I made the background to go behind it here. There goes my tulip. Making that background made me want to make an egg out of it, which then made me want to use the negative space to make a shaker. I think that the shaker is so fun. The sprinkles are from the ice cream corner suite and they actually match really well with this. So I thought it was cute. And then the little bunny on this one is from the Daisy Punch. So different than the bunny that I did on my other Easter cards that you can see on my page. But um, that was my, if you give a mouse a cookie story. If you get Alana doing one thing, it's gonna turn into another and then turn into another. So tell me yours. I'd love to hear what your, if you give a mouse a cookie story is. Isn't it cute, Susie? And this is the little flower from the head wrap here, or not the head wrap, but the little um, crown there of flowers. So I just fussy cut it, believe it or not. I did do that. I fussy cut that little flower. So here is the butterfly card that I asked on my page the other day. Can anyone guess how I did this? So can you guys tell me if you're still here, how I did this strip? Anybody have a comment for that? I'll give you guys a minute to catch up and I will grab my flyer again with the retirement party information. Thank you, Linda. I had fun making these. They were a lot of fun. And this uh, technique here, that's the one I'll come, I think I'll come and do a live next week and show you guys how I did this one. You can probably guess on that as well, but I tied the two different techniques together. So comment and let me know if you guys want me to walk you through this one. But this here, actually, I saved a little bucket while you guys are, I'll give you guys a minute to answer me on how you think I did this piece here. And I will grab my little container of all of the pieces of paper that I stamped while I had this ready. I think, uh, one second, they helping me tidy up and it got moved. So while you guys comment, I'll be right back. And my apologies, you guys don't have a view of me. We uh, will figure that out, we're working with it. But being my first time coming on here, I figured I wasn't going to try to figure out the extra technology for the first time, but I'll get there. So I have all kinds of cute little pieces that I did with the technique that I made the butterfly with. So this adorable little turtle, um, I have to turn him into something. I have a friend that commented, oh, he's on his back. He's adorable on his back. I did some greetings, so this one will be posted with a project, but I used that trio of tags and stamped a bunch of the miss you. When you've got that technique ready to go, you may as well use up the pieces. But um, I've got all these butterflies. So it started out with these bright, vibrant colors, and then it did get a little more muted and mixed together as I went. But I still, that's what this one is made with. But there's all these beautiful butterfly layers. Lots of them. And I saved the little offcuts too. I put them on the lining of cards. But I used jar of flowers. I used the zebra. There's some stems from jar of flowers. I used the succulent bundle. There's more of the turtle. I did some on the stitched rectangle, so I could just use those straight as 
layers on cards, and then all of these zebras. So I did some in each zebra from Zany Zebras. And Wendy, here's one for you if you're still here. The Dragonfly. This is from the Sweet Sampler from the Spring Catalog. It's the Hostess set, and then the Globe, and a Sand Dollar from Friends Are Like Seashells. But I will have to get busy turning these into um, some cards so that I can have a series of cards made with that technique. All right, so no guesses on how I did this strip here. I'll let you guys um, comment in the comments and tell me just for fun how you, if you have figured out based on my card today, how I did this piece here. All right, so that is everything for today. Thank you guys so much for coming and watching with me. Don't forget to share in order to, and make sure that you comment. So if you share, I need you to comment to say that you did just so that I can track it that way. Um, this being my first live, that is the best way I can think of. If anybody else has a better suggestion, please let me know. But at least this way I can scroll through the comments and see that you've commented to tell me that you've shared. So if you do that, you'll be entered in one giveaway and then watch for my other post with the If You Give a Mouse a Cookie giveaway. And I will have fun reading your stories about If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. And then if you use the host code for April, by April 9th, I believe is my deadline, but I'll post that information as well. Then you will qualify for the retirement party that we have on April 24th. If you can't attend the actual live event, which will be virtual, then you will still get your giveaway and your card kit. So feel free to hop on my site and use that and you will get an invite to our event. So happy Easter. I hope you guys are all well and thank you so much for watching with me today. Bye, everyone.